Good morning, it's your crazy old good here. How you doing? Uh, before we get started, I want to thank all my new subscribers. Your subscription is uh, much appreciated. Okay, today we're going to talk about this. The RX 570. Now this is the gigabyte version. This just happened to be a bot. But I'm sure what I'm about to talk about deals with all of them. Now, this seems to be a problem with AMD. You take it out of the box, you stick it in, and you get meh performance. And then you go in to Global Watman, and then you slide the uh, power all the way to the right so you can give it full power. And all of a sudden you get the advertised power uh, performance out of the unit I mean basically when I put it in the box out of the box put it in my GPU was running at about 1100 megahertz slide the power bar all the way over run it again and now I'm getting 1250 megahertz which is what they they say your your boost should be so you can get that performance and all you have to do is slide it and the performance there is really good but the the really surprising thing is when you go and you start to overclock it then you can really rack up the performance and almost to the point of a an RX 580 so this thing is a heck of an overclocker and the main reason I think this is it's a very mature process okay they've been making this GPU family for over two years now so they've got the process down they're not getting a lot of bad chips so what they end up having to do to make the 570s is they have to cut down good chips and then you get wicked performance out of them by overclocking them so now the time to go to my graphs and my pictures and and show you exactly what I did so this first photo is about your default settings out of the box. That means out of the box, I stuffed it in the uh, icy blue and just fired it up. These are the default settings. Like it's same thing would happen if you went up and hit the reset button. This is what you get. So your state seven max is 1245. Your voltage control on your GPU is at 1150. You got your out of the box fan curve. And then you have your memory set at 1750. And your voltage control is 900 millivolts. And then this is what you get. Your GPU is at roughly 1084 megahertz that's nowhere near 1245 if you run your fire strike benchmark or any other benchmark you're going to get uh results i got in fire strike i got 11632 time spy was 3406 strange brigade was 101 world of tanks was 11884 superposition was 4638 Rise of the Tomb Raider was like 70.91. So the first thing you're going to need to do to try to fix this and try to get your GPU up to 1245 is to take your power limit slider and slide it all the way over from 0 to 50 plus 50%. 50 and when you do that and you run it, and what I'm running here, in case you don't know, because I didn't tell you, is Fire Strike First Graphics Test. That's the hardest. A lot of the other tests, you can get nice flat frequencies. You see how r ragged this is? And this gets you up to 1144, but it's still ragged, and you're not getting up to 1245 yet. To get to 1245, what you need to do is take your voltage in uh, millivolts at 1150, drop it all the way down to 1050. As you see in this picture, now the orange line, which is your GPU line, is flat. Flat line, 
1244 megahertz. So now you're at least getting the advertised boost clock out of this thing. To get that, you need to put your power slider all the way over to the right. So it's at uh, plus 50%. And you got to take your voltage down to 1050. And now you get a nice flat line, solid GPU frequency of 1244. The next step is how far can we go? So let's try a little overclocking. So what we did here is we just pushed the uh, state seven up to 1280 and then smoothed it out. So state six is at 1250 and state five is at 1195. I got the left the voltage for the GPU at 1050. And you can see here the orange line is not too bad, but it's got that little dip in the center. Now this becomes a re reoccurring theme because this again is Fire Strike, the first graphic test. And we've got 1280 on either side, but we've got this little dip to 1257. So the, the test here is to how do we get rid of that uh, 1257 megahertz and make it 1280 all the way through. So basically, we took GPU voltage and just knocked it down another 10. So it's instead of 1050, it's 1040 across here. And now you see in the orange line in the graph that it's nice and straight at 1280. The other thing I did to get up to 1280 was I, I made a more aggressive uh, fan curve, as you can see here. Now the reason for this is, is when you're trying to overclock, you want to keep your GPU temp below 60. Once it starts tripping above 60, you want to increase your fan curve and keep it down. Once we're all done, then we'll go back and then we'll see how far we can back off on the fan curve to keep it the noise down. But when you're overclocking just to find your limit, you don't care about the noise. You just want to make sure that your GPU stays cool. So uh, let's try another jump and let's go from 1280 to 1325. That's a good jump. Run our favorite test, Fire Strike Graphics Test 1. And it looks pretty, the orange line looks pretty flat. It's got that start of a little dip there. So instead of 1330, it went down to 1325. Now, at some point, and not necessarily here, but it may be higher for some other people, you're going to have to start making a trade-off. And the trade-off is GPU speed or memory speed. So what I did here is I dropped my memory speed from 1750 to 1700. Now that freed up more power for the GPU because it's all bunched together, the memory and the GPU for the max power that that unit can draw. So when you back off on the memory power draw, it gives the GPU a little bit more. And you can see here that there was a tiny, tiny bit and it's in not in the same spot. So this could be almost anything. This could be like a CPU was busy doing something else. We just had a little drop down to 1328, but the rest of it is a nice flat line 1330 with a memory down to 1700. Now you're saying, ah, oh, but you're giving up memory speed. I did test, okay? I had this sucker and I'll show you in another frame down the line here. I've ran this at 1800 megahertz on the memory and 1700. And I run tests at 1800 and 1700 and there is virtually minuscule, maybe a 1% different, and only on tasks that are using large chunks of, of video memory. To get more GPU power, I dumped frequency of the uh, memory, and I also, actually, I dropped the voltage to the memory down to 875 also. Now, let's try a little more overclocking. Now, before we did a 50 megahertz jump, now let's do a 25 megahertz jump, up to 1355. So it just bumped up the state seven up to uh, 1355 and ran our favorite fire strike graphic test number one. And you see, we got that little dip on the orange line right in the middle that we always get. But other than that, it looks pretty good. 
It's not very ragged. And notice the uh, fan speed, the yellow line. We uh, started cranking it up to keep the temperatures in place. How do we get rid of that little dip? Well, we do our favorite trick again. We drop the uh, voltage down 10 millivolts down to 1030 and run it and boom, it's clean again. Straight line, no problem. I think you get the gist of what we're doing here. I'm not going to keep on going every one of my little jumps. Basically, you're going to bump up your GPU frequency, run Firestrike 1 graphics 1 test, make sure that the uh, GPU frequency is flat across. If it's not, then you lower your GPU voltage until that goes away. So this is showing me running the RX 570 at... 1400 megahertz at 1030 millivolts with a pretty aggressive fan curve and at 1800 megahertz. Okay, so it can run 1800 megahertz. Now the graph here is showing Fire Strike 1 test where the line is. And then you've got graphics test 2 and then you basically got your CPU test and then you got your combined test. All the rest of them look great except for graphics test one, which is what I told you earlier that this is the hardest one on your GPU. Now at 1800 megahertz, you can see that it's a little ragged here. It's not the nice flat scaling across the uh, test. On the, we're talking about the orange line, which is the GPU uh, frequency. So basically when I took this down to 1700 megahertz, that test really flattened out. Now, the question is, is which is better? You know, GPU speed or memory speed? Well, it depends. If you're talking like games, like this graphic score on Firestrike, 1700 megahertz is better than 1800 megahertz because you get a better score. But on Superposition, where you're moving large chunks of video data through the memory bus, the 1800 would be better because you can move those chunks faster. You gotta kind of like pick your poison once you start getting to the edge. And, and this is the edge. 1400 was as fast as I could get it to go. I, I think I got it up a little bit more, but it wasn't 100% stable. I called it quits here. So this is my overclocking part of this. Now I, I'm gonna go and do my testing, you know, my benchmarking in another video because this is already getting too long. So this is your crazy old coot wishing you a good evening.